Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and we are back. It's, uh, I'm going to lean in. There you go. Hello. There you go. That's better. We're back. I see Vedanta in the corner of my eye. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. I, uh, we, it's Thursday, and we are going to do some gouache painting today. We want to stick with uh, traditional media. We had such a great time doing the brush pens. These guys right here uh, on Tuesday, Bemoji. If you remember, we did this uh, we did this little sketch right here with the brush pen. This guy, down shooter, Dustin. Down, down shooter. shooter. Yeah. So there we did go. this guy on Tuesday, and uh, that was a blast. And uh, I wanted I wanted to stick with doing some traditional media with you guys. And uh, so I thought because I haven't done it at all with anybody, we thought we'd jump over to gouache. Now, for those of you that don't know what gouache is, gouache is an opaque watercolor. So watercolor uh, usually is transparent. It's tra you build up layers and you go from light to dark and you really can't paint anything light over the, over the dark areas because it's transparent. Now, um, gouache uh, has opaque mediums in it so you can paint light over dark or dark over light it's still water soluble so like watercolor if it dries up on your palette you can reconstitute it with water and it gets going again um, i sat down last night and did a little practice painting you can see here uh, oh, right. down there shooter there it is i um, i used to live on the beach a few years ago and had some photographs and went through them and and uh and found this image and so i thought i'd try to recreate it in gouache I had a good time doing it and so i thought okay well why don't we do some gouache painting for the live stream and so i pulled out some more reference i was going through my stuff and this is a photo that i shot on i can't remember the name of the river but this is in nepal in chitwan national park and we were out tracking rhinos and tigers never saw any tigers but we saw plenty of rhinos. We were tracking them on elephant back. And this is a photo that I shot of this wild Indian rhino uh, at the river in Nepal. And I thought it would be really kind of fun to try to sketch it fairly quickly. It's probably going to take a few hours, a couple hours. But I thought we'd do that today in, in gouache. So we're starting with blank. Hopefully we're going to end up with something like that. It's going to be a lot hoping. of work. Here's hoping, I know. Hoping. I'm a little nervous. I'm kind of on the spot. I'm painting in front of a whole bunch of people on the spot in a medium that I'm not completely used to. I haven't painted in gouache in a long time, other than that painting I did last night. I'm, I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah, we'll try. <laughs> we'll try. Well, as usual, I've got my young spawn next to me, Dustin Blaze. Hi. <laughs> Hi, uh, the, everybody that I can't wait to right now because I don't have a camera. Yeah, he doesn't have a camera. <laughs> and then uh, and we've got uh, Nick. Birch, my business partner, and he's in Sarasota. Oh, we didn't pull up. Uh, we didn't do the thing. Didn't do the thing? Yeah, we got to pull up. Oh. Nick. Oh, what's daisy? We got to pull up Nick's deep thoughts. Nick, do the thing. So go to bookmarks, Dustin, and there's deep thoughts uh, yes, yes, under yes, bookmarks. Yes, yes, yes. Under so, bookmarks. But anyway, uh, so we've got Nick there. He's going to be helping to answer questions. And um, so while Dustin is doing that, Dustin, why don't you shoot me over to the down shooter? Down shooter, done. On the done. There we go. All and right. And can put Nick your... up there. There you go. Push the little green button. Yep. All right. Uh, Deep thoughts with Nick Barch. Here we go. We got it already right off the bat. We've got a YouTube question. Do I prefer going light to dark or dark to light uh, in gouache? I kind of prefer. I go back and forth, but I kind of prefer going dark to light. <laughs> uh, sort of like working in acrylics. Um, I just like to do that. Although with gouache, I go back and forth. Same thing with acrylics. Twitch question. Is it acrylic gouache or watercolor gouache? This is watercolor gouache. So it is water soluble. All right. So I'm just going to get my board set up. And just very quickly, I want to do this sketch of this rhino. What's so funny, boy? Oh, well, just all these comments when you int introduced me. Dustin is owned by Disney, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And the other person says, Hi, Dustin, you're the Robin to Aaron's Batman. Yes, he is. It's so adorable. So I just want to get these shapes in very quickly. 
And you, and you already answered the uh, the Twitch question, right? Uh, about the acrylic gouache or yes. watercolor gouache. Yeah. Right. And the the really cool thing about these rhinos is that we would we'd stumble across them. You know, when we were on elephant back, we were, we were going through all this elephant grass. This just is one of the few clear places that we came out on this river. Um, any, anytime you got off the river, you were in 20-foot tall grass. And it really was grass. And, um, and it was really cool because you could hear the rhinos. And they might be 10 feet away, but you couldn't see them. And so you'd hear this, rrr, 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 you know, and then they'd, they'd, uh, I mean, I'm drawing his head too big here, but let's see. Rrr, rrr. But, um, let me see if I can do this here. I'm just going to quickly sketch this out. It's a little far over to the left, but I'll run with it. I'm going to keep it. But so we, so we'd come up on them. Uh, and, um, they, they couldn't really see us, so they'd stand still, even though we were on elephant back, and, um, the elephants weren't really scared of them, so they, we would just kind of hang there and be just a few feet away from them, but when they were out on the river, they were really cautious when they'd come out like this, and it was very difficult to get near them, especially if they had young with them. What's your preferred brand of gouache? I'm trying to find an affordable but good brand. Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton. Um, I don't know if that's affordable for you. They're, the Windsor Newton brand is uh, somewhat expensive, but when you, you're paying for the pigment, so you're getting a lot of pigment. Grumbacher is another good brand. How much are those usually? It depends on the color. Really? So the, the... all the cadmiums, cobalts, cadmiums are more expensive. You know, things like that. Your hues are less expensive because they're not, the staining power is not as strong. Really? They, they price things by, by color? Yeah, because the pigment is harder to get. Like cadmiums uh, are more expensive because it's a cadmium pigment that's in there. So it's a little, it's, it's uh, pricier. Never knew that. Yep. The more you know. So I'm trying to get here. Currently fighting to finish a script for a comic I'm working on. Really fun so far. Uh, now I start to wonder if I know my character well enough. What do you recommend me to do? Uh, keep writing until the end or know my characters better? <laughs> know your characters better. Your character is really a driving force, right? And uh, it, it's, it doesn't, you know, people talk about a plot driven story or character driven story you can't have one without the other and so if you don't know your character you don't know the decisions that that character is going to make in the course of that story and so a lot of times um that and that's okay because a lot of times you discover your character as you're writing the problem with that method is a lot of times by the time you get to really know your character your story's written then you then you want to write it over again and you know we always joked about that at disney you know, right when we finished animating, we knew our characters well enough to start animating. <laughs> so it's like on Beauty and the Beast, you know, I really felt like at the end of, you know, when I was done animating on Beauty and the Beast, I knew the Beast well enough to really go back and start animating him again. And, uh, but you just don't have the, those opportunities, obviously. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see this or not, but. Is it the rhino or the hippo that don't walk unless their calves walks first? Uh, that I don't know. I've never heard that. So, real quickly, and you know these are these are Asian or Indian rhinos, and so everybody thinks they have these big armor plates on them. They're not armor plates. These are just really big folds in their very tough hide that they've got. They're just folds in the hide. But it's just folded in a way where it looks like armor. Yeah, and, and for this species, they all fold basically the same way. <laughs> that's, that's rather interesting. Yeah. Uh, have you ever visited uh, Kaziranga uh, National Sanctuary for Rhinos in As Assam, India? I have not. 
I, I've, I've only been to ever. India one time. I was in Delhi for just a few days. I really, we really want to go back. Um, I want to go to Sri Lanka and down there as well and uh, hit some of the the elephant uh, refuges, ref, refuges down there. Um, but also hit some of the reserves in, in India as well. So is gouache is opaque. Does it act like the multiply layer in Photoshop? No. Um, actually, regular watercolor works like the multiply layer in Photoshop. Because you build it up and you can see the layer underneath. With, with gouache, it's opaque, so you don't see the layer underneath, depending on how opaque you go. Uh, Emily on Periscope says, I tend to find that little touches of gouache can add a lot to a watercolor piece. They can. Absolutely. You can go in and add some opaques. I try to stay pure with my watercolor and uh, see if I can do the whole thing transparent. But uh, I absolutely agree because there's a lot of times I'll go back and let's say I'm doing a portrait of a cat or something and I need some opaque whiskers. I'll do that quite often. In fact, you did that for, uh, for one video for the uh, upcoming watercolor course. I did. Exactly. So that would be in there. Eric asks, do you find that you are more creative uh, during a certain time of day? No, I um, I find uh, any time of day. I've gotten to, so used to just having to work on demand or like this. You know, when we do our live streams, I got to be ready to go at 1 p.m. every, you know. And we, I was sitting here scrambling trying to find what I was going to paint 20 minutes ago. I knew I wanted to do gouache, but I wasn't sure what I was going to paint. So, you know, a lot of times I'm behind the scenes, I'm scrambling right up to the last minute to figure out what I'm going to do. And uh, William on YouTube says, Aaron, you're a part of the reason why I've invested in the Cintiq 16. Definitely a good purchase. Well, man, that makes me happy. Because if you didn't like it, I would be fa I'd be sad. <laughs> I like these, uh, this combo of comments here. One person asked, what is the sound of a rhino makes? And oh, it's... Yeah. And right, and right after that, someone said, "Have Dustin impersonate one." <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think I might have some have the sound on some of the video that I've shot in my in my photos uh, section there. I don't know where that would be. Click on photos. Click, go down. Photo. Oh no, that's me. Uh, no, the, uh, to the right, 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 right there. Photos. Now, uh, double click on that photo on that image. Do it again. There we go. Now scroll down. Yeah, keep going. Down. Down, 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 down. Keep going, keep going. Up, slow down, keep going. Going, going, going. Keep going. That's up in the, that's in gang talk. Keep going down. Now you're going to hit, now you're hitting some of the, yeah, go back up. Go back up. Go back up, back up. I think some of those are videos. Do you see any of those looking like videos? Uh. Uh, they may have gotten shifted, but anyway, I've got Dang some. It. Yeah, sorry about that. That was a whole waste of, whole it lot was of waste, waste of time. Of, waste of nothing. Am I sitting in front of the? Uh, you're you're good. So I I do the sketch very quickly. You can see, it's uh very very quick. And um, what I like about gouache too is I can just get in here and draw as much as I want. And not worry about the pencil showing through like I do with uh, transparent watercolor. Although, even with that, I, uh, I often don't mind if it comes through, depending on the effect I'm trying to get. Did you take that photo? Yes, I took this photo. Nick says, we are currently working on an animal reference library for... Oh, yes, we are. So, we are currently working on an animal reference library for CreatureArtTeacher.com subscribe, uh, uh, for, for the subscribers. In there, we're going to have a video with about five minutes of two of the rhi uh, rhinos fighting that we filmed. Yeah, so what we want to do, because I'm so, I've got so much animal reference, I want to start sharing it with you guys. And uh, so we're going to put together a big reference library for the folks that are subscribers. And, um, you know, locomotion, action, all kinds of stuff. UK here. Sorry if I missed it, but what tape do you recommend for the edges of the art? Masking oh. tape leaves things uh, sticky. Yeah, mask, don't use masking tape. Masking tape will tear the paper. This is artist tape. Artist. It's just called, 
You can see on the inside here, artist tape. This is one inch wide. This is a half inch wide. And it goes on and peels off and leaves everything perfect. So just uh, look up white artist tape. Uh, it's way overpriced, but I don't have any choice. Um, but it's, uh, it's sticky, but not too sticky. That's the beauty of it. So I drew him a little too far over to the left for my compositional needs, but that's all right. I'm just going to try to balance it out here, and I'm going to go very loose with it. That's a goose. What are you laughing at, boy? Oh, just a comment. Somebody made the Ace Ventura comment from the second movie with Ace Ventura coming up. Oh, he's being birthed, birthed out being, of the rain. Being birthed out of the rain. Being, being birthed. <laughs> You can also draw a picture with the head out of his butt. Me? <laughs> 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 righty then. If you look in the reference, there's a pile of mud here. That's actually a pile of rhino poop. Nice. <laughs> How do you like the idea of Disney princesses uh, from Ralph Breaks the Internet is making their spinoff? I like it. I think it's kind of fun. If they do it irreverently, I think it's a lot of fun. And I think it's, I mean it's not, that doesn't they don't have to be too irreverent like like uh, DreamWorks was in in uh, in uh, Shrek the first one with fairy tales and all that. But I do think it's fun for them to make fun of themselves a little bit. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So I've got something. I've got enough of this down where I think I can get. The head is just a little funky for me. I want to clean that up just a touch. So any chance you might come to Lebanon? There's no chance of me coming to Lebanon right now. Um, we just don't have anything happening in that part of the world. But we might have some stuff happening near Lebanon. Or you might be able to come over. Such as uh, we're going to be in Seville, Spain uh, at the beginning of May. And so you just got to hop over the water there. If you can get over the water, then we'll be there. I'm not sure. Are there travel restrictions from Lebanon to Spain? Not sure if there are. But anyway, uh, so there's my my quick rhino. And uh, we're going to now take that, and I want to start laying in some color. I'm going to start with the background. Well, first thing I want to do is I'm going to start mixing color and I'm going to keep it somewhat thin you can switch to this camera yeah, yeah, too yeah. let's see how it works there we go see we got a it's alive we've got an easel or an easel we've got a palette easel. cam set up a palette and I, I tend to go really kind of messy and quick and and I'm using I should be using titanium white right now all I've got is zinc white and uh, zinc white is rather transparent. It's not super opaque. Um, but that's okay. That's all I've got. And so that's what I'm going to use. And So I'm just going to mix up some of the color that I'm going to need. Uh, and I lay everything in really rough. Got a big bucket here. Um, Nick, uh, Nick's, it's also often called drafting tape. Oh, okay, gotcha for the... For the uh, artist tape. Uh, Twitch question. Aaron, what's the latest animal you've become fascinated with drawing? Anything new? No. <laughs> I'm still stuck in my big cats and bears. and Right now, this is this one uh, uh, being my... The one that I'm doing now. Let's say the rhino. We'll just say it's a rhino. That's the latest one I'm fascinated with. Manny just wrote, Tomorrow I'll be in Yellowstone National Park. Yeah. Oh, man. Ah, oh, Manny. Dang it, Manny. <laughs> so I'm going to mix up a little bit of... Actually, I probably should throw some cerulean in there. I've got cerulean blue right here. Have you heard of the 500 prompt drawing sketchbook? Where the book has 500 pages of prompts you draw where the book already have written on each page what you... What you're going to draw. That's cool. Uh, if you're into that, I think that's very cool. 
Um, I always kind of know what I'm going to draw or paint. So I'm not, but I think it's a cool idea for those that get art, art block. Uh, Lunart Tick Firefly on YouTube says, budget tip. I use masking tape, but if you use a hair dryer to blow hot air on it before taking it off, the glue will go soft and you can peel it off without tearing the paper. That's a great idea. I never knew that. William on YouTube asks, what surface are you working on right now? Panel or canvas? Oh, I'm glad you asked that. I'm sorry. I completely forgot to tell you guys. I am working on Arches watercolor paper, 140 pound uh, hot press. So I'm working on very smooth paper hot press. And uh, 140 pound, I'm working on a watercolor block so it's sealed all the way around. And then I can just peel it off after that. So that's what... You know, it curls up a little bit. You can see that's curled just once you little. pull it off, but it's not too bad. But that's what I painted on last night. This is the the smooth 140-pound uh, arches paper right there. So I'm going to continue mixing here. Would you ever come to Croatia? Absolutely. Actually, we, I've got a couple of Croatian friends, and we've been talking about trying to organize something in Croatia. Uh, do you airbrush at all? I don't. I did in college, and I, I wasn't very good at it. I'm going to grab a little bit of alizarin, just to warm that up. And then to tone it down, I want to gray it down a little bit. I'm going to grab a little ultramarine and tone down that ochre. Just gray it out. Uh, the, the ultramarine is a complement. It's an opposite color. And so it'll gray it out, brown it out, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be for some of the color on the on the rhino itself. I'm trying to mix all of my colors ahead of time. I'm going to go brighter on that too. And the other thing too, it's it's hard to making the adjustment going from watercolor to gouache for me because I always think of the watercolor as transparent and forget that the gouache. Um, is not and so I tend to make my colors too dark the other thing with gouache that's kind of hard to get used to is that it it goes on a different value a different lightness and darkness than what it dries to it dries darker than what it goes on uh, will there be a way to use the image library library uh, without a subscription like for example just buy the animal skull package we haven't we haven't decided yet <clears throat> we're not quite sure so this is um it might look like black that i'm getting but it's not this is Payne's gray i like using Payne's gray because it's not black it's a cool blue black cool cool i'm going to gray it out just a little bit and then we'll go darker later a masking tape with a hair dryer. Does anyone know if that still leaves the edges sticky on canvas? I don't know. I don't personally know. Because you don't use masking tape? I don't use masking tape. I use artist tape. Yeah, I haven't used masking tape in years. Is that, uh, what, is that what you used Twitch to use? question. Any news on what you'll be doing at the Lightbox event? No, there is no news. I know I'll be speaking and... Uh, um, and we're, you know, we'll be doing a few things there, but I'm not sure what uh, yet. Is that the thing that's going on in um, Pasadena? Yes. No, no, not November. Is that in, it's um, gonna, yeah, it's September-ish, it's, it's yeah. It'd be funny if it lands right on my birthday. Birthday. <laughs> my birthday. Bader. Hey, Bader. Hey, Bader, what app are you currently using? <laughs> what app? App. What app am I using? I think for the uh, live streaming. We're oh, currently OBS. using um, OBS to live stream. I was going to say, um, my app is a pad <laughs> of paper in my hand. My app is called a ballot. It's called wash. So I'm just laying out all the color. Still laying out color. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. Recently saw the movie uh, Princess and the Frog. Is it weird I was a little dramatized on what happened to the Firefly? Yeah. Poor guy. I love that Firefly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Your breath almost killed me to death. <laughs> Your breath gonna nearly kill, kill me to death. <laughs> like my favorite part is when um he takes the one sticker, gets the one sticker off the off the gator. Like no problem, let me get that for you. And he, then the gator turns around like, can you help me with the other side? It's just nothing but stickers. Just like. Oh, <laughs> just, just that like, just that sound of sigh, just like, oh. oh. <laughs> there we go. That's a good background color. So I've got a little bit of, I've got a few colors in here I'm going to use. Have you seen How to Train Your Dragon the Hidden World yet? It's really amazing. I'm sure it is. I have not seen it yet. So I'm going to go to a flat brush and I just want to lay in, I just want to get this board covered. Um, I'm going to go rather thin with it. Do you think one day you can do a Bob Ross style painting but in Photoshop? <laughs> Equivalent brushes to his tools, same color palette. Probably. Hey, jump over to the down shooter, Dustin. Yeah. So I'm just going to lay in very quickly some color here. I'm going to pick this up. It's funny that speaking of Bob Ross, I, I recently saw a video on Facebook where um, these this teacher and all, all of her um, students went to the stage of their school and they had Bob Ross on a projector they were learning how to paint like Bob Ross, and they were all dressed as Bob Ross. That's pretty cool. <laughs> like with buttoned up shirts, like the same clothing, they all wore the Afro wig. And so they were painting like Bob Ross while watching Bob Ross while dressed as Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> they basically had a Bob Ross day. <laughs> That's great. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just just want to cover some of this this up right here I want to get some of the background in I'm not worried about it being I'm just gonna let it bleed let it run together I can still see the drawing of the Rhino underneath everything which is fine What's the difference between drawing and painting? You can draw with a brush. There's really, I mean, drawing, obviously, traditionally drawing mediums are hard, like graphite, uh, crayon, charcoal, those types of things. And then painting mediums, obviously, are you use some kind of medium, whether it's oil or, or water or whatever it might be, to run those together. Hi guys, do you mix colors before painting with watercolor too? And when yes. will the watercolor course be out? Dustin, when's the watercolor course coming out? When I'm done with the editing. <laughs> which I'm hoping to get done as soon as possible. So I'm hoping to get it all done at at least by the end of, end of next week. Hoping. There you go. So that's my overall goal. So hopefully you guys will get the uh, upcoming course in a couple of weeks. And yes, I do mix uh, beforehand when I'm doing watercolor. I'm not sitting in the. I'm not in the picture, am I? I'm not in the way. What's your horoscope uh, sign? I'm an Aquarius. I'm a Virgo. And Salcerano just wrote, Dustin, finish the editing thing. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> it looks like Nick's got a... YouTube, will you ever want to grow your hair long again? Uh, in the immediate future, no. I had my hair long for 25 years, and I'm really liking having it short right now. Maybe. You know, the one reason I would ever grow it is to donate hair again, because when I was, when I had it long, I was donating it. 
and uh, and I like being able to do that for sure. And uh, uh, Twitch question: Do you ever use masking fluid? I do use masking fluid, but not for gouache. I don't really need to with gouache, but I use it for uh, watercolor. And actually, we have a whole section. I do a couple of lessons where I focus on using masking fluid in my uh, watercolor course that's coming up. And uh, so you. here, and uh, Nick Nick asks, "Hey Nick, is it possible to get a shot of the palette and the painting in the same view?" Oh, uh, you know what? I think I might be able to do that. Uh, nope, that's not it. So the key at this stage is just to lay down, get this canvas covered, and um, and I want to make sure that I'm not tightening up too much. I just want to get the general. Sorry, everybody. Just want just one second. There we go. There we go. Oh, look at that. Done and done. Well, that's awesome. That's how I, so I, I blocked your view a little, <laughs> a little bit at first. Like, yeah. I was trying to make it shrink. <laughs> Someone's requesting me to do the Flintstone sound. Like, what what sound? <laughs> like, yabba dabba do? Like that? Yabba. Yeah, Yabba dabba do, Peter. Peter. Hey, Peter, yabba dabba do. So you can see how this is, uh, it's also, you know, once it sets, it's still water soluble. So I'm just going in and hitting some of these areas here. Did you ever have issues with family or friends not supporting your dream of being an artist? And how do you deal with that? Uh, no. I, um, and I really didn't care what anybody thought anyway. I was gonna, I was always very stubborn and with what I. No one, no one was gonna tell me what to do, even as a kid. So, I never had that issue, but I was always very supported by. My family. As far as wanting to be an artist. Most of my family was artistic as well. And so. You know, my brother is an animator, an artist. My my mother wanted to be an artist, but she just never did it. Uh, my father's very artistic. So we were very lucky in that sense. My brother and I. Yeah. And my stepfather as well. You know, my parents divorced when I was young. And my stepfather was artistic as well. And he's he's the one responsible for getting me into, you know, watercolors and... And really driving me to get my act together when I was a teenager and kind of rebelling to get my act together and get into school, you know, get my, you know, figure things out, basically. Did you just mix plain watercolor with white gouache to create all your gouache colors or is no, your no. palette all gouache? No, it's all gouache. All gouache. All gouache. Um, Alex K on YouTube asks, is there a media which you aren't as comfortable using or dislike using? Um, there's certain ones that, yeah, I've just never, I, I'm not a good sculptor. Um, I haven't sculpted very much. Uh, but beyond that, no, there's pretty much, uh, I like, a, I like all mediums and, um, everyone has its challenges and like gouache, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't use gouache very often. And so for me, it's a little difficult because, um, you know, gouache has its own, you know, things that make it what it is. And uh, so that's a little difficult sometimes. <laughs> Dustin, you could entertain that birthday parties doing impressions. <laughs> yeah. He could. So, hey, Peter, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just laying in color. How many times have you taken a sip of the paint water 
thinking it was drinking water. I've done it a hundred times, at least a hundred times. That must have been a fun taste. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the worst is when you do it with turpentine when you're doing oils. <laughs> So right now I'm working the gouache very thin, like watercolor, just to get something down on the paper. And then it looks very messy right now, but I'll go back in. <laughs> Thinking now I can't see it. Somebody, uh, <laughs> that uh, your, your greens in the small, small uh, window there uh, looks like a shocked Pikachu meme. What? The what? what? Basically, your your greens looks like a shocked face. Just... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I can't I can't unsee that anymore. And uh, a while back, you said you were coming to Denmark sometime. Uh, would it be possible to meet you here somehow, or is it a closed event? I'm going to be uh, in Viborg uh, April 20... 27th or 26th, somewhere in there. And uh, I'm going to be at the animation workshop. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a closed event. But check into it. See if, the, see if, it is, if it's open to the public. It might be. Juan Carlos on YouTube asks, how fast does gouache dry compared to watercolor? Um, I actually think it, think it dries a little bit faster. It, it's, it's, water, it's a water-based medium, so it basically comes down to however fast the water, the water dries. And uh, for the question that, uh, about accidentally drinking the, uh, the paint water instead of the, instead of the drink, Instead of the normal water, yeah. Somebody adds, uh, "I have often dipped my brush in my coffee." Oh yeah, I've done that many times. You have? Oh, I think every yeah. artist has done that. Yeah. Dip your paint into your coffee by accident. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. That must have woke you up even more. Oh yeah. <laughs> but what's the uh, current size of the paper? This is nine by twelve. Nine by twelve. Okay, so here's the reference. There's the reference. There's the lay-in. Once again, reference, lay-in. Um, and now, once I've got it laid in, now I can start going in and um, and starting to uh, render it a little bit and uh, add more color. First, I want to blow dry it, so I'm not going to be able to talk for the next. Oh, what's my favorite memory going to the Academy Awards? <laughs> I've got a couple. Let me uh, dry this first, and then, uh, then I can talk. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear me or not. Can they hear me? Turn it off! Turn it off! Gotta blow dry this for a bit. It looks like a mess, doesn't it? But we're gonna we're gonna fix that. We're gonna pull it all together, make it look really pretty. moderator song again when the hair dryer's on <laughs> yeah i sat at the bar and had a drink with clint eastwood uh during commercial break got him a <laughs> got him a white wine and uh you know hung out and with the with all of the hobbits from lord of the rings and went to the lord of the rings after party did that that was fun got a lot of good times 
I appreciate, but the uh, drinks are free. Yeah, I, we asked him <laughs> if we could buy him a drink, and he goes, "Yeah, I appreciate it, but the uh, the drinks are free." <laughs> that was Clint Eastwood, in case you couldn't figure that yep. out. You must have been like, "Oh no, what am I doing?" <laughs> no, it was it was fine. It was fun. He was a cool dude. I don't agree with his politics, but I like him. Yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I would probably lose my mind just a little bit, especially if it was like Arnold, my all, my all-time action hero. Yeah. Like you just picture like walking up to him, like Mr. Schwarzenegger's an army. She's like, "Oh, nice to, nice to meet you too." <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go to the chopper to get to the after party. You want to tag along? (laughs) (laughs) So I'm just going to go in and just loosely throw in some shapes in the background here. Have you ever done uh, murals? I did. I did in college. I did murals in college to help pay my bills and help pay my tuition. Uh, how do I understand or know my characters better? You got to write them. You got to write them. You got to, you know, how do they fit into your story? What, you know, what in their world brought them to your story? Um, you got to figure all that stuff out. And it's just sitting down and deciding who they are. This is that Arnie's favorite bar, the Chopper. No, the Chopper is the place that is the thing that gets me to my favorite bar. It's called <laughs> Dylan's. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you sell some of these uh, demo original paintings? I haven't yet. We have not sold any yet. Doesn't mean we won't. <laughs> I'll see you at the party, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> is it Victor or is it Richter if, from Total Recall? I never figured that out. I don't know. So once again, I'm just going loose over this. And then once this dries, I'm going to run a little fog over the top of it just to run it together. What's the most mind-blowing thing you learned as an artist? Oh, I don't know. That's that's a that's a tough question. That's a good one. Uh, the most mind blowing. I don't know. That's that's awesome. Uh, that's interesting. That question alone is mind mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, that question alone is mind blowing. <laughs> you know, there's so many things to to consider. You know, as as an artist, I've never really thought about any single mind blowing thing all right I've got to blow dry this (laughs) twitch comment rest in peace headphone users (laughs) sorry to the towel now put the hair dryer down (laughs) Roll on YouTube asks I struggle to determine when to call a watercolor painting finished I either think they look unfinished or overdone. Do you have any tips? No, just keep doing it. You'll start to get a feel for it. I um, I, w- I struggled with the same thing. You know, set up having a clear idea of what it is that you're going to paint. You know, thumbnail it, whatever. Everybody started to, everybody started to bring up, break out the uh, Arnold quotes. <laughs> Well, my personal favorite Arnold movie, specifically for the puns, is Batman and Robin. Oh, yeah, they do that. Batman and Robin, thing. everybody thinks it's a terrible movie, but I love it for Arnold, especially with his puns. Just, all right, everyone, chill. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my God, can you be any more obvious? Uh, what's your favorite thing about watercolor? Um, I, for me, it's an easy medium. I like it because I've been doing it for so long. I, it, I think it's a very, I can manipulate it pretty well. And um, 
and I think it's it's actually somewhat forgiving. I like the spontaneity of watercolor too. Nick says, Dustin may be mute mic, but he's doing the hair dryer. But when he's doing the hair dryer, what? Oh, mute the mic? Oh, maybe. Oh, mute mic. But then... I'm still talking. Yeah, we're still talking. <laughs> we need a Dustin Blaze comedy special. There. I'm going to run some of that together to get a little gray. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back later and uh, run some of that together. Or put some, you know, some distant detail in there. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like it is. That's going to be my background. Nick says, Dustin, maybe mute the mic when he's doing the hair dryer. Yeah, that's well, what we just talked about. <laughs> now you see my problem? I'm going to mute it now. We are back. So I'm going to grab some of that brown. I'm going to go a little burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. Uh, all right. My dad is going to Africa next week. I think it was uh, Tanzania. Been yeah. there? I have been to Tanzania, yes. I went to Terengeri National Park in Tanzania. How do you get yourself to paint more loosely? Hold on loosely. 38 Special. I listen to 38 Special. People are now like, now I miss the blower noise. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I mute, because I muted during the last uh, um, dryer. You know, it's, painting loosely is just something that you have to force yourself to do. You just have to have faith that it's, that it's going to be okay. It's going to come out all right. So what I'm doing here is I'm uh, just the the sand in the background. I'm going to get it a little cooler too. That sand in the ah, barf. Oh barf. That sand in the background is dark towards the water's edge here. Yeah, Nick, Nick said, okay, the muting is just weird. My bad. <laughs> it's okay, Nick. We you know you mean well. So, I'm, uh... Just painting in some of these darker spots of, uh, sand back here. And earth. And now I want to really lighten it up. Got another question up there from YouTube. Okay. Can we ask it for you? Yep, you... read it to me. Uh, John on YouTube asks, do you prefer hot pressed paper over the textured cold, cold pressed for watercolor and the gouache? Uh, no, I prefer cold pressed with gouache. I want, I want the texture with gouache. I mean, I'm sorry, not gouache, watercolor. I want the texture with watercolor. I want the smoothness smoothness with gouache so I prefer cold or hot press with gouache cold press with watercolor so I'm going to turn this upside down just kind of work this I'm always very interested to see a painter's shapes and loose strokes turn into something. I'm watching, how is he going to do this? <laughs> <laughs> well, very carefully. Very carefully and smooth that. We're going to let this. 
At this point in your career, is there any part of your drawing skills where you wish you were better? Um, I'm all, well, I think in general, I, I'm always striving to get better at everything I do. And I, uh, I struggle as much as the next guy. You know, I just stick, I, I, yeah, I just don't give up. So I've got a general sense of the tone coming down here. And I'm going to add texture. Notice I'm going very, very quickly. Very quickly, very loosely. Very loosely. 38 special. 38 hold, special. Hold on loosely. Got myself here 38 special. He's a pretty one. Looks like Nick's got a couple questions for you. Ask him for me. Nick said, oh yeah, I thought we were going to put that one. Yeah, no. <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> Uh, Jacob on YouTube asks, uh, how was the transition from learning illustration in school to anime, animation professionally? And do you have any tips for doing the same? Yeah, I mean, the, the, for me, I already knew how to draw. I learned how to draw in college. I had some great instructors. And that's one of the reasons I got the job at Disney was because of our instruction uh, on drawing at Ringling. And, uh, and so the leap from knowing how to draw, from just basic drawing to animation is not a huge leap. It's just understanding action and movement and, and emotion and how to convey those emotions uh, through acting, right? And so that's where we spent our time is, uh, you know, trying to understand that. And so I, but I, we're, you know, we're always trying to know how to, to, at least in 2D, we're always looking to improve our drawing skills. And uh, see, one of the things I'm looking at here is, you know, the, the uh, gouache dries darker than when it goes on. So I've got this nice blue, it almost looks like white on here, but it'll go on kind of a blue gray on my uh, painting. Do you have any advice on keeping to any advice and keep having fun and not stop enjoying what you do when turning the things you love into your work? Uh, saying turning art into a job. Thank you. Well, I mean, I already I love what I do already, so I think it's just being aware and trying to keep that attitude. I was saying it's a matter of finding what kind of art you want you want to do that that you enjoy doing yeah there's that but i mean art in general i mean just learning different types of art whether it's animation or or here we are you know doing some gouache painting whatever it might be find the thing in it that that really drives you do you listen to tv audiobooks music when you when you paint air music music yeah, I kind of, like, sometimes I listen to music, but then sometimes I actually put on, like, movies or TV shows in the background. And I don't even pay attention to the, to what's going on. I just listen to it because I picture it all in my head. And somehow that, that keeps me more awake than listening to music. Yeah, I can't, I can't uh, do that. I have an inability to, to have TV going because I want to watch it and then I can't watch TV and pain at the same time. So getting some of these, you can see how much darker that's drying compared to what I had on the palette. But the great thing about this medium is you can go in and paint over it. Opaque. Opaquely. Opaquely. Uh, do you have a recommendation on a laptop or desktop computer that can handle your art programs? Animation, short clips? 
I use Mac. I have a Mac Pro. That's what I use. Um, you know, different people have different things. My budget. Um, I really push my budget. You know, I, I, we as a business, for us, that's the best computer for what we do. And um, it's a little bit pricey, but uh, it really serves our purposes. Yeah, I, per I personally go... And PC. here comes Dustin. <laughs> Yeah, I I personally am the the one PC guy of the whole team, but um, yeah, I personally like PC more because the parts are cheaper to come by and you can build your own. And so when uh, you need to replace a part, you simply take the old part out, and put in the new one once you can afford it. Yeah, Mac just don't have to replace the parts. No, you have to replace the entire computer for a couple of grand. No, I've never had to replace anything. Just wait a few more years. There we go. Yeah, we, we, we have those kinds of debates all, all the time. <laughs> They're rather entertaining. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to redefine <clears throat> the, the, uh, the rhino. I'm going to start painting on the rhino now and just work my way from left to right. To what extent do you consider yourself a YouTuber, and which YouTubers do you follow? Any non-art YouTubers? I don't really follow any non-art YouTubers. Uh, I don't. I, I follow people, but I don't really. I for me, I don't spend time on YouTube other than when I'm posting stuff to YouTube. So you know, I, I know Proco and a few other people, but that's about it. Um, you know, that's that's my extent. Basically, like fellow artists. Yeah. Soresk on Twitch asks, do you have any brush recommendations, Mr. Blaze? I'd like to get into gouache. Yeah, I mean, my biggest recommendation is, if you, you know, you don't have to go super expensive sable brushes or anything like that. But make sure you get a couple of flats like this. This is a one-inch flat. And I recommend maybe a, a half-inch flat as well. They're great for laying in areas and then using the edge to to get nice choppy areas and then rounds that's all I pretty much use these are all round brushes for certain bits of detail mine are go they, mine go all the way from a number three up to a number 16 so um, it really depends and actually I've got this one here this is a uh, this is a 50 you can see how big that brush is <laughs> I'm not gonna use that on this one so uh, but there you go but I've got to get in here now and I've got to get serious about doing some some painting here on this guy. Have you ever tried digital painting on the software paint tool Psy? If so, what are your views? I have not. What's what it called? Psy. Psy, S A I. Never done it. Okay. So here I'm mixing some dark. I'm going to go in and I can barely see the drawing when I come in here and I'm just going to lay down probably could go with a bigger brush but I, I, ha I feel like I have some good control with this small number three Just gonna lay down some dark and then over the top of that we're gonna throw some light. Is there still the opportunity to make a career doing hand drawn 2D animation, like not flash style, now that 3D animation is everywhere in the industry? Sometimes I get some discouraged uh, by this, even Disney has stopped doing it. You know, I think it's gonna come back. If you look at streaming companies like Netflix and Amazon um, they're currently creating a fair amount of content in 2d now I think a lot of it is flash I could be wrong but that being said I think it's gonna start coming back around again and we're gonna see a resurgence of 2d animation in the future you know with the advent of you know new software and and uh, drawing tablets, 
um, you know, a lot of the overhead is being cut back, and the and the ability to, to work remotely, a lot of the overhead is being cut back, um, just from the sheer fact that you don't have to use paper and and that sort of thing. Um, so once again, I think yeah, it's gonna it's gonna change. I think we're gonna see. I said a resurgence of it and I think I'm using too small of a brush right now but uh, I would be I, be patient because I think it'll come back around that's my advice and my hope cool and we're gonna try to make it happen <laughs> It looks like Nick's got a whole list of new... Oh, look at that. Jesse on YouTube asks, can we use watercolor techniques on gouache? Absolutely. It's a water-based medium, so you can do it. You can also do it with acrylic. You can use acrylic acrylic like, uh, like watercolor. If you so choose. But the cool thing about acrylic is that it's opaque once it dries, and so you can build up, you know? What else have we got? Uh, Zorisk from uh, Twitch. Uh, do you have any brush recommendations? Oh, I just talked about it. Uh, BM reports uh, that on uh, um, Macs are 300% cheaper to own over their lifetime of use than PCs over the same period. <laughs> That's probably for like pre-built PCs, not custom-built PCs. <laughs> Mark on YouTube asks, Aaron, I already have my positive opinion on this, but I'm interested to know your thoughts. In a world of digital arts, why use traditional tools, i.e. paint, traditional animation, charcoal drawings? Why? Why not? Um, I mean, for me, I, I like, I love digital art. Obviously, you guys know I love digital art. But I also like, at the end of the day, to have a physical piece of art in my hand. I love the craftsmanship. I love, you know, there's... <coughs> Excuse me. There's a challenge that comes with traditional media or any or any type of medium that you have to you know the art have, much of the art is understanding the medium and 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 uh, and working with it right. I mean that's that's the craft of it. Going a little bit blue. There are applications for visual art in games like tabletops or RPGs. Uh, their their art is really awesome. Have you ever thought on joining a project? I have not. Only because I really love where I'm at right now. How do you deal with water lines when working wet over dry watercolors? I blend them. You'll see that I'm constantly rinsing my brush and squeezing water out and then going back in. And if you can see, I'm pulling water out and then going back in and 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 uh, reworking it. And the thing with with uh, gouache and watercolors, you can go in and you can still rework it. I'm still just laying in the base right now. You know, the problem with gouache is it takes me a little bit longer than other mediums. So like. The one we did the other day where we were just drawing, this is gonna take a bit longer. This might take a few hours, but you know, we'll just we'll just roll with it. Oh yeah, yeah blend. <laughs> I'm gonna jump to a larger brush. Will you shoot the gouache course soon? Uh yeah. Uh, I might do an acrylic course before that, or I'm, and I'm I'm also looking to do a uh, a new uh doggone it. I gotta go darker. Um, a new animal drawing course. I want to do a birds of prey course. Where's your iced water? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it before I started. You want me to get one for you? No, I'm good. So here, I'm just going in and 
Did you work on 1990s Rescuer, Rescuers Down Under? If so, which characters did you do, did you animate? I uh, did. I did work on that. It was the first feature I ever worked on. And uh, I worked on all the prison animals. Kangaroo down down below and a uh, little bit of the lizard. Matter of fact, in order for me to get promoted to animator, um, I had to do an animation test involving the character uh, Joanna the lizard from that movie. So I had to animate Joanna uh, coming into this room and kind of sneaking around. So we have a few more things from Nick. Nick, 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 Nick. Nick, Nick, do the thing. Morgan on YouTube uh, asks, I'm trying to teach myself how to paint with oils, and I was wondering if you had any tips. Yeah, the thing with oils is, uh, you know, oils are probably the most forgiving, and just remember that. You can get away with a lot. Um, I'm going to do an oil course. I love painting in oils. And, um, you know, it's just telling you tips, you know, cold is a little, it's a little hard, you know, because, uh, there we go, because um, I'm not sitting there showing you, uh, but, um, you know, just be patient with oil and just let it do its thing. You, there's a lot of control you can give it, and, um, but you just got to take your time. That's probably the biggest thing I can tell you. Sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to paint and think of another. <laughs> I'm trying to paint and gouache, but think about oil at the same time, and I'm having a hard time. Sorry about that. And Nick says from earlier, having said that, we have a pretty neat book and book game project we are working in very soon. Yes, we do have. Um, it's a choose your own adventure type thing and we're, we're really having a great time with it. And um, we're gonna be doing some live, um, I'm illustrating a big chunk of it. And uh, we're gonna be doing some live uh, illustration, uh, illustration, illustration? 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 Illustrating of it soon in the near future. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just building up Building up, building up. To the uh, latecomers, is the watercolor course available? Not yet. We I just started editing earlier this week and uh, hoping to get it all done by the end of next week. And so the uh, watercolor course should be out in a, in a couple of weeks, at least by the end of the month. Fingers crossed. Yep, fingers crossed. So I want to start getting some other color in here. And you can see I can scrub these and soften them and get all kinds of texture. Got a new question up there. Joshua on YouTube asks, in your experience and tenure, do you conceptualize the image or effect you want to produce or do you find yourself applying practiced techniques and seeing what happens. I try to envision it first. And then from there, I, um, I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll apply my techniques that I know, but I, I definitely try to try to see what it is in my mind, what I'm doing. And I'm trying to get a very specific light colored orange here color of that hide it's got a lot of red in it is white and black a color uh, depends on what you how you consider color because any any color can go so bright or so dark that it becomes those colors so technically it is you know it is those colors um, But it definitely belongs in the color spectrum because, you know, our, our things will get washed out to the point of being white or, or dark and to the point of being black. So 
So you can see I've kind of pulled, if I show the, the rhino here, you can see I've kind of pulled together some of the darks to redefine that rhino. So now I want to go in and start defining some of the color and the hide. Do Nick question. And the other thing that's going to happen here is you're going to see that this will probably dry a little darker. Uh, YouTube question. Can you describe the shift in uh, celebrity from the old days when the public didn't know the animators to now with the social media and things like that? Any weird fan moments? That's, that's a funny question. <laughs> um, no, not really. I mean, I've had people come up to me that recognize me from... Uh, YouTube or whatever, you know, in the grocery store, which is always kind of weird. Um, <laughs> but other than that, no, not really. I mean, you mostly get your, your fandom happening uh, in conventions and all that. Yeah, and that's that's cool. But did you ever have any, like, encounters, like, in a, in a market, like Publix or something? Yeah, I've had people come up to me in in, uh, in grocery stores that recognize me, you know, locally, and that's it's always kind of weird. So, I'm just laying in some nice, cool colors on his snout, like so, that are reflecting the sky colors. And I'm going to have to build that up. Is it true that Disney artists don't use color black in their work? No, that's not true. We try to avoid using black. I mean, they don't, it's not something you just jump in and use. But if it calls, if you know, if it, if it calls for it, you use it. <laughs> Do the people that you, they meet, uh, tell you put your card away? Yeah. <laughs> and Nick says uh, from earlier it depends on the color spectrum you're referring to light is different uh, than pigment yeah but e and whether it's in light or pigment things still can lighten up to the point of being white or darken to the point of being black another one up there do you want me to read that for you yes please uh, Mark on YouTube asks, uh, creating 2D animation, I rough out and tie down every frame of my animation. Then I ink every frame. The inking process takes forever. Any recommendations or approaches to speed it up? No. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of suffer no, through it. No, no, I really don't. I'm, and, uh, unfortunately, it's... Uh, it just it's one of those things that just takes time and uh and i the in between process for me it always drives me nuts and uh it just is what it is it just takes a long time Arr, it drives me nuts people are crazy are you aaron blaze the father of the famous dustin <laughs> yes that is he Do you know what iPod, iPad app is better for doing 2D hand-drawn animation? I've used uh, Toon Boom with a PC, but for me, it was hard to do the cleanup because of the lack of precision with the pencil. Although, doing the rough was a lot of fun. But is I there any know. iPad apps? That I don't know. Hmm. Do you know of any, Dustin? You're asking me. <laughs> I, uh, I I really don't know. I, I honestly have no idea if there are any uh, tablet tablet based uh, um, apps for animation. I've only known like Nick TV Paint, know. Toon Boon, all that stuff. But those are all computers. Nick, do the thing. We need you to figure it out. Uh, 
Oh, there is an app uh, a couple people brought up. Uh, one said, uh, try Rough Animator. Followed by another person says, uh, I, I hear Rough Animator app is good. Then, uh, <laughs> yeah, give it a try. See how that does. Yeah, a couple of people are, yeah, we got three people mentioning about Rough Animator. So I guess that is the, uh, the app for the iPad. <laughs> There you go. And uh, I think we ran out of questions so far. I ran out of content. So I'm just kind of working back and forth between light and dark. And, um, oops. Too much pigment on my brush. What size is the Arches paper in centimeters? In centimeters? It is. 23 centimeters by 31 centimeters. Do you find gouache requires a sturdier paper than watercolor for all the layering and scrubbing? Um, no, not necessarily, because I think watercolor requires pretty sturdy paper, too. Because I do a lot of scrubbing with watercolor as well. Uh, do you know Nick Sider or have you seen his paintings? No. I do not know this person you speak of. Oh, Nick says if you have an Android tablet, TV Paint now works on that. Nice. That's pretty cool. That's pretty freaking cool, man. All right, so I'm trying to get Give nice. us some more questions. Throw me a freaking bone here. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's all right. Working on the highlights now. Yep, going back and forth. So I like jumping, you know, from right here, like up at the top here, I want to really define the shape of the back of the rhino. Man, it doesn't even feel like a, an hour's pass. It's crazy, huh? Yeah, feels like half an hour. What's the biggest uh, differences between gouache and watercolor? Gouache is opaque. Watercolor is transparent. How do you maintain a uh, healthy work-life balance? I, I, um, I don't really have any problem with that. You know, when I, I like to play too. So I um. You know, we have our own business. So Nick and I, you know, if we want to play hooky, we play hooky. And, um, you know, and don't feel guilty about it. We love, we love what we do. But we also love to, you know, we love enjoying our families and, and, uh, and that sort of thing. And, and so I don't have any problem getting out and, uh, and just getting away for a while. Now, I, I do, if I'm on vacation or something like that, I do tend to bring drawing material and all of that so I can, because I, I like to draw for fun as well. So I'm still doing that. Nick just uh, 
changed his picture to to whom I think is uh, Nick Sider. So now you can start to see that I'm starting to build up and getting some nice light areas along the top of the rhino here. What exactly did you uh, do for Disney? I was a director and an animator. Uh, I was there for 21 years. There we go. Do you have any tips for improving drawing faces? I find it quite easy to draw bodies in motion, but when it comes down to faces, uh, they just don't look right. You know, that's just, it, it, it's hard because there's a lot of symmetrical issues that you have to look at and perspective. You got to make sure, probably one of the biggest things that people forget is making sure that the perspective is right on a face. You want to make sure that all the, everything lines up in the right way. So don't forget your perspective. That's a huge one. Is concept art created through the process of movie making or is it all done before the storyboarding? It's done before and during, you know, because uh, you're figuring stuff out both through storyboarding and concept. In fact, uh, during The Hobbit, they were concepting the, the design of Smaug the Dragon the entire time before uh, the second one released. Yeah. I think it was like what they, they did the whole, they concepted the whole thing throughout the entire production of the first Hobbit. During like the filming and everything. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until like weeks before, um, what was it? Like weeks before they did the official small reveal scene, when they uh, when they were finally finished with the design. Right. So, yeah, it can it can range from all different times. It's just as long as it's still going on, then there's still room for concept. Absolutely. Uh, how many layers can you add in gouache painting? Is there, a, is there a point where the paper can't take any more? Not really, because you're 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 building up on the pigment. You're not building up on the paper. The paper takes the initial bit, but you're really just building up on the pigment on top of pigment on top of pigment. So I could theoretically just keep building this up. is kind of what I'm doing right now. <laughs> if I'm looking to buy the character design course that you offer, is it necessary that I should get the complete animation course first? Not necessarily. If you want to be an animator and you don't know much about animation, then I recommend getting the animation course only because I think it'll help you. Um... But uh, you don't have to, no. Not at all. Uh, basically what you want to learn. Do you want to learn how to design characters? Get the character design course. If you want to learn how to animate, get the animation course. If you want to do both, then they get both. It's all about what you want to do. And what you want to Thank you for that clarification, Dustin. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I got a couple of new ones up there. And oh yeah, there. that's pretty cool. Uh, that that is that the uh, I that like photorealism. That's cool. Jesse on YouTube asks, while you're mixing color, is it possible to say the name of the colors? It is possible. Will I do it? I don't know. <laughs> no, of course I'll do that. What do you do when you don't know what to draw? Wait, wait, I got this. You draw. Yeah, I yep. just draw. And eventually it'll come to me. Just draw. Just sit down and do it. Just do it! Any tips for concept art, storyboarding, portfolios, trying to get a break? 
Put your best work in. That's the best I can tell you. If you don't have the best work in, then it's not, you're not, you're doing yourself a disservice. And don't put any incomplete uh, pieces in there. See, it's, when you get to the highlight section like I'm doing now, it gets weird because you'll see that this, what I'm painting right now is going to dry a lot darker than what I just laid down. Could you do some Bob Ross ASMR? All right, well, I'm just going to paint a little bit of hide here. Just painting this hide, getting some texture in. I'm not worried about it. I they can barely hear you because of the mic. Exactly. So they have to get in real close and listen. Everybody just get in real tight and listen. Can hear me? Hear me paint? Hi! <laughs> Rip the headphone users right there. So here I'm just putting in a little bit of texture. There we go. What artists have you have uh, inspired you most? Um, well, there's no single artist that, that's inspired me the most. I've been very inspired by a lot of different people, both alive and dead. Um, I was just thinking about Joaquin Soroya, who was an amazing Spanish painter. Um, I've been a fan of for years and years, and we were just talking about him the other day. Um... Yeah, there's just, there's too many to name. I missed the beginning. Uh, did you sketch this by eye or take a quick outline of the original for proportion? I sketched it by eye. You can see the reference up to the right of the screen. Go. Have you ever made a video where you made art with the cheapest garbage? I did a video one time where I made a painting. It's on my YouTube channel. I did a painting with coffee and crayons. And look at what Nick did. <laughs> <laughs> Jagger's back. Is the brush that you're using a synthetic brush? It is. It is a synthetic. That's okay. I don't. I am. Um, I treat my brushes really badly. So I am. Um, there we go. So I. Uh, I buy cheap ones, but ones that'll hold their hold their tip. Looks like I got a few new questions. Nick, 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 do the thing. Okay, read them to me. All right. Uh, Twitch question. Are you softening your edges with a drier, with a dry brush or more damp? The times I've messed with gouache, I've always had problems with picking up pigment while trying to soften edges. Yeah, you do pick up some pigment, but you got to kind of redistribute it at, at the same time you're, you're softening it. And so, yeah, I am picking it up, but I'm also moving it to where I want it to be. It's hard to explain, but um, I know what you're saying. And uh, it's just, over time, you'll get used to doing it the right way, I guess is the best way I can put it. And YouTube question, how are your whites not muddy? I, um, I make sure to keep the color pure. I never mix more than two colors when I'm mixing my whites. That way they don't become chalk.
Hello guys, technical question. Uh, with gouache, when you put a color on and then put water on it, uh, did the water or did the color underneath move like watercolors do? It depends on if it's dry or not. That's the big deciding factor. There, you can see this guy's starting to come together a little bit for me. What did you call those nifty brush pens you uh, you were using the last stream? Uh, ben Jumanji's? <laughs> Jumanji's? Jumanji's? No, these are Bemojis. <laughs> Bemoji. It's a Bemoji. Bemoji. They're called Bemoji. Do you appreciate uh, Ralph? I'm going to butcher this. Ralph uh, McQuarrie? McQuar 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 yes. McQuarrie? Yes. McQuarrie? McQuarrie. 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 Or McQuarrie. You can, I've heard him used both ways. But do you appreciate his work? Oh, yeah. The Star Wars stuff was amazing. Was he the, he was the original yes. concept artist for all the ships, right? Yep. That's right. I think I saw a post on the Facebook somewhere. So here I'm just kind of moving paint around. I'm trying to create texture. Uh, Megan on YouTube asks, what are the essential skills you need to do concept art for films? I think speed, imagination, obviously painting ability, drawing ability, imagination, all of the above. So is it coming out too great? But I'm having fun doing it, and that's imp that's the important thing. It's all about having fun in the end. Yeah. This makes you it can nice. see we've got some nice kind of stuff happening here. I just want to get in, and we got to get to the really deep darks down below. We're just making making a nice little friendly rhino out on the river. Are you a Marveler or or DC? Neither. I don't really care. <laughs> I've never. I've never. I, I like, don't care. I like the movies. <laughs> I've just never been uh, either one. I didn't really grow up with comic books. I grew up, you know, drawing dead animals and stuff and being creepy that way. Yeah, I've 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 owned like the like a few issues of Spider Man and. Uh, and like Wolverine thing here and there, but never got like really into the comics. But I did understand the uh, the characters and everything. So when it's so when I saw the movies, I understood stood them quite a bit. So yeah, but yeah, based on movies and comics, yeah, I like Marvel more than DC. DC sometimes they make their movies a bit too dark. I mean, what do you mean sometimes? Every yeah, freaking movie. Well, Wonder Woman wasn't so bad. I mean, no, that's yes, the PAL is still dark. <laughs> Cinematography wise, yes, it's all still dark, but it's definitely the better one of all the DC films. Uh, did they use gouache paintings for the Disney movie backgrounds or acrylics? Uh, acrylics, gouache, watercolor, oil. Depends on the movie. Bambi was oil. I think we used gouache on some of the Roger Rabbit uh, backgrounds. Uh, Beauty and the Beast was oil, wasn't it? Acrylic. Oh, acrylic. Yep, yeah, Beauty and the Beast was acrylic. And um, Mulan was water color? Uh, acrylic. But treated like watercolor in a lot of instances. Uh huh. So I got close. Somewhat. Somewhat. Uh, what? What about Brother Bear? What was Brother Bear? Uh, oil. Acrylic. Uh, 
But it was meant to look like oil paintings. Aha! So I was fooled exactly as planned. <laughs> you were. It was meant to be very painterly. Yeah, what, what's the most common uh, paint used? Like, as you as you mentioned, like three from three it's digital now. Well, back then I'm talking about because you mentioned like acrylic three from three different. Uh, yeah, probably paints, acrylic so. because it was so it's so forgiving. I got two new uh, questions from Nick, or in this case, Mick Jagger. Um, Josh on YouTube asks, could you explain the abrupt movements and geometric lines you make occasionally? Uh, no, I think it's just my style. Sometimes I don't realize I'm doing it. I, uh, I try to follow the planes of, the, of an object that I'm painting, you know, the shape. In 3d space and so sometimes that comes it comes through in that way <laughs> painting the happy little rhinos what a lovely image <laughs> and a YouTube question uh, I'm developing CGI show reel I animate in 2d and use as strong guide to create CGI. Should I include the 2D rough uh, animations with CGI shots and show reel? Should I, I include the 2D rough animals? Yeah, if you think it, if you think it's uh, interesting to the people viewing, and it might give you a little extra leg up, then yeah, go ahead. But you know, if it's if it's something that only you can appreciate, then don't you know you don't need to overload it. Oh, Matt Matt Yoakum here nailed it because I mentioned a uh, Mick Jagger. I said Dustin, don't you mean you have a, you have a, we have a question from Nick Jagger? <laughs> <laughs> yes, from Nick Jagger. Nick 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 Jagger. Have you used gouache paint on toned paper? Yes. And it's fun. Toned paper is like the uh, darker... Yeah, anything that's not white. Gotcha. Good to know. There we go. I'm just trying to get... I want to get a nice light color... And something that's opaque enough. When doing cleanup for animation, what is the best way of doing it? Doing the keys first or just straight ahead? Keys first. Do your keys, then do your breakdowns, then do the in betweens. Always. Always, always. Yeah. I never painted with gouache. Do they dry fast like acrylics? Yes. So I'm going through now and just hitting, <clears throat> I want to hit the top of the, still, there's still a little bit to the top of the rhino that I want to get here. Just working it. Nick says, uh, as a quick follow, when some people review portfolios, they like to see prices work to get an idea of how you think, while others only care about the finished product. But if it's good 2D, I say go for it. Yeah. Yeah, if it's entertaining, like I said, then put it in there. If it adds, if it, if it adds to the, to the person that's judging you, 
If it adds to it, then definitely put it in there. Can gouache be reactivated like watercolor when left alone? Yes. It's one of the reasons I like it. I like it a lot. And, uh, I already asked the uh, the drying fast question, right, about the acrylics. Mm -hmm. So you can see when I lay down a brush stroke, you can see how bright it is when I lay it down. But as it dries, it really darkens. That's one of the hardest things to get used to when painting in gouache. Again, keeping this pretty in, loose. In animation, yeah. I get the concept of keys and in-betweens, but I still don't understand uh, what are breakdowns. Breakdowns are between the keys and the and, and the in-betweens. So a breakdown is not it's not quite a key, and it's um, and it's not a straight in-between either. And so it's something kind of in between. It's it's the breakdown. I don't know how to explain it more than that. It's um. So it's like say the keyframes. One is look like the first keyframe is you looking left, and the second keyframe is you looking right. Mm -hmm. The tra the um the in between is you looking straight ahead, and the breakdowns is... No, those are in-betweens. The, the, those are the in-betweens? If I... If the, the, here's, here's a... This is what a breakdown is. Put the camera on me. Uh -huh. So if I have my hand looking at... Pointing at you, and then I have my hand pointing over here, those are two keys. There's a key, a key. and there's a key. Now I'm going to move my hand between the two. Now, am I going to pull my hand in and move it that way? Am I going to move my hand straight across? So the breakdown is going to dictate, it's not the key, because here's the key and there's the key, but it's also it's going to dictate the action. So let's say I want to pull my hand in, so I'm going to come here, there's my breakdown, and there's my other key. So now it tells the artist that my hand is coming in and then going like that. And then the in-betweens are going to be from here to here, the drawings in between, and then from here to here, the drawings in between. And as long as you follow that arc, You've got good movement. But that's what a breakdown is. The breakdown is not quite the key, because here's the key and there's the key. It's the breakdown. It's the one that dictates, helps dictate the action. Where it's going to go next. Yes. Gotcha. Now it makes sense. Does that make sense now? Austin just joined. Do your best, Jagger. Uh, what do you think of mixing different materials but with the same texture effects as wash and color pencils? Uh, do you recommend? Sure, try it. I always recommend experimentation. It's always, it's always a good thing with art. You'll, you'll make discoveries. <laughs> Sorry, comment. I want that Nala statue. <laughs> uh, Mark asks, as a follow-up uh, to my inking question from earlier, should I treat inking the same way, keyframes and then in-betweens? Yes. And then Peter from YouTube asks, uh, who do you think would win, the Indian rhino or the water buffalo? Uh, well, that's a tough one. I don't think any one of them would fight, first of all. But, um, well, they are pretty territorial. The, the Indian rhino is not quite as big as people, as you think it is, compared to the water buffalo. There's a good chance a water buffalo could win. Although the rhinos are really big, too. I, you know, I, they, they are big, but I don't know. When you're traveling for a closed event, why not have an an informal event and greet at a, like a cafe or a bar? Because it always depends on time. When I go and do these events, I'm usually in and out. That's why. 
But if we can, we'll start doing more. It depends on, you know, the amount of time that I'm in a place. Was there ever a time that you felt that your work or your skill is not enough? And yeah. how did you deal with that fear of not being enough? I just kept working. I really did. I mean, it really came down to that. I just don't... I have faith in myself. I really do. And I, um, I just... Uh, push through and um, you know I, I I don't know how else to tell you you just gotta you gotta fight through that and just have faith in yourself and know that you can do it it's not always easy matter of fact it's never easy there's times when it's less hard but it's never easy ever ever Going in with some cool colors right now. Getting some texture on this guy. Is your channel also streaming on Twitch? Yes. Yeah. Your, your, your Twitch name is uh, Aaron Blaze Art, correct? I believe. Did you answer any of the... Uh, any other questions? Uh, I don't think so. Can you answer or ask them for me? Uh, did you ever work with or meet a Avon Earl? Ivan Earl. Ivan Earl. No, Ivan Earl was before my time. But Ivan Earl, for those of you that don't know Ivan Earl, he's the one that did all those beautiful, he was a beautiful style that was created for Sleeping Beauty. Those trees and the backgrounds were just stunning. That's Ivan Earl. Nick says, uh, on our Europe trip, we are aiming for some of those informal meetups. Stay tuned. But he spelled it out as T-O-O-N. That's right. Stay <laughs> tuned, baby, as in tunes. Looney tunes. But we, um, yeah, we're looking to do that at the zoo in Manchester, if we can, if we can swing it. So I'm trying to get some of the texture here on the on the back end of the rhino. May just wrote, uh, May 17th, come join us photographing uh, in Bozeman in some Yellowstone action. Yes, May 17th. That's something we want to shoot for. Bozeman, Montana. Photographing cougars. Bears, all kinds of fun stuff. I'm going to get some of the grass in here now. It's time. It's time. I'm just sitting here kind of noodling. i got to stop noodling. Got to move on and get this thing over with. For someone who knows very little about gouache, uh, what is the difference between gouache and watercolor? <laughs> the biggest difference is, sorry, we've just had that question. Yeah, and this is Austin asking. She just joined in. Oh, okay. Hi, Austin. <laughs> the biggest difference between gouache and watercolor is that you can see what I'm doing right now. I'm painting light over dark. You can't do that with, uh, with watercolor. So gouache is an opaque medium, meaning... It goes down, you know, depending on how thick you use it, it goes down opaque. You can't do that, man. You just can't do it. Uh, will you come to Austria? We have an amazing zoo in Vienna. I'd love to. I would love to. Do you keep up with the newer animation TV shows or movies? Is there any uh, you watch or plan to watch eventually? No. Okay. <laughs> I just don't. I um. I used to. Well, the latest the the latest uh, anime movie you watched was the uh, Spider Man movie. Oh yeah, I thought you were talking about like the series and stuff like that. No, it was just. 
straight up just animated like TV shows or movies. Yeah, movies, you know, I try to do as much as I can. TV shows, not so much. I just don't have the time. I don't watch, I, I'll sit down at, at night and watch a little bit of TV, but I like, I'm trying to spend, I try to spend more time in my studio. I have a great difficulty seeing colors accurately when I paint. How do I get past the illusion that a certain color is lighter or darker than it actually is? Um, experience. Time and experience will take care of that. So you can see just very loosely laying in grasses and that sort of thing. This is um, coming out okay. There's a couple of other areas I want to hit. We would love to meet you down here in Argentina. Uh, will you ever teach a workshop in Latin America? I've taught lots of workshops in Latin America. Um, problem is, I just haven't been to Argentina. <laughs> I've done a lot of stuff in Chile. I've done stuff in Brazil. And actually, are there any plans of going to Chile? Uh, not currently. Um, although, you know, that can change pretty quickly because we go down there. A fair amount, Nick and I do. Hi, Aaron and Dustin. Which brushes do you juice? Do I juice? Juice. I think meant choose? Yeah, probably. And uh, I am... Um... There we go. That feels better. Right now I'm using a number three round. Very small brush. Probably smaller than I need to use. Somebody says he needs a little birdie friend for, yeah. for the rhino. He needs a nice little friend right on his shoulder right there. But uh, Nick says, uh, for those asking about, about color, we have an awesome course on color theory by Ronnie Wilford at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Ronnie's one of the best guys at color I've ever met. He's really, really great. So I really recommend it if it's something you're, if color is something you struggle with. Uh, Ronnie's really great. Do you ever just press con Control Z out of habit when drawing traditionally? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> but I know people that do. <laughs> I made a mistake. Where's my keyboard? Uh, sorry, your your painting gouache. Uh, what textures, such as like fur, skin, grass, wood, uh, etc., uh, what are, which of these uh, textures do you enjoy the most to draw and to paint? Wood and fur. I like fur. Grasses. I think I like grasses too. The challenge. You're doing grass right now. Yeah, so like fur, like wolves and bears and yeah. tigers. Oh my. Oh my. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Uh, any update on whether or not you're coming back to UCF? Um, no, I don't have one yet. Right now, we're going to be doing a lot of travel, so the, the, the answer is no. At the moment, we're not going to be hap being there. I'm not going to be there anytime soon um, because my summer, pretty much our summer is taken up between Europe, Japan, and Hawaii. Um, but, uh, but things can change, so stay tuned. I think we already answered that one, Nick, but it's probably a latecomer. But, uh, David on YouTube asks, uh, how many layers of paint can the gouache hold before starting to have problems with the paper? Oh, it's, I don't have any, I don't know. I've never, I've never hit that far. Because the gouache will, can keep going and going and going. Just like an energizer batter just keeps going and yeah. going and going. I'm just going in right now and softening some edges.
uh, my son really wants to do this, and while I agree colleges are too expensive, but you always go back to that Ringling got you in. Uh, would you have gotten in without the networking from Ringling? It was a different time back then. I think you can get in without Ringling now. Back then, the way I got in, I was in the first internship where they took people that didn't that weren't from an animation school. Um, it was our it was our program our our um, our pilot program that kind of started the whole internship thing that happened through the nineties, and so ours was quite a bit different. Um, I think with all the information that's out there on YouTube and, you know, all the stuff you can get online, I definitely think you can get an education without going to college. Now, I think it really depends on the, on the student as well, because not everybody learns the best that way. Some people need that discipline. So it really, I think it does come down to, you know, how, how well can you learn on your own? I have a suggestion for Easter, you should do a yellow bear playing with some eggs and hares and bunnies. Okay. <laughs> uh, what, what are our hor horoscope signs? Oh, I'm Aquarius. I'm a Virgo. How do you get the networking and mentoring without college? Social media. It's all done through social media now. There's so much. I mean, so many people get jobs and are recognized just through social media alone. Uh, Melly Hops on Twitch asks, uh, do you ever have trouble with your paint becoming muddy yeah I'm struggling with it right now um, you know this is a struggle for me this painting but I'm having some fun uh, but it's yeah it's always I always have a uh, not always um, it's just I'm doing a painting that's mostly in the in the gray range and so it's hard a lot of times to keep that feeling fresh and uh, Nick says that uh, he and Steve are both Capricorns for the uh, hor horoscope the horoscope hor horo whatever is however you pronounce it <laughs> I'm just creating a little bit of texture in the background here. Is there a newsletter I can subscribe to to know where uh, you'll be traveling to? I never knew you came to Latin America and would, and would not want to miss the opportunity again. Yeah, so go to my website, creatureartteacher.com, and we have a monthly newsletter that you can sign up for. CreatureArtTeacher.com And we are out of questions. There we go. I'm just hitting some new areas along here to get the beach a little more detailed. Yeah, it's going a little slow. Yeah, Austin, if you're watching, I might be a little late. <laughs> you make me want to. You make me want to try gouache now. I've never tried it before. I'm going to get broke buying art supplies. It's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Good. 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 
Let the hate flow through you. <laughs> it is all going as I have foreseen it. Uh, what is the watercolor course available for, for, uh, for purchase? When I'm done with it. Hopefully by the end of the month. I am just got I just got started with it today. Or not today. Uh, earlier in the week. If you decide to come to Latin America, come to Peru too. Oh yeah, we've always wanted to go to Peru actually. A uh, YouTube comment says, uh, Poor quality gouaches can wreck your paper after a certain amount of time of use. I'm sure. And you don't want to use poor paper either uh, on the flip side of that. And a YouTube question. Uh, have you worked in other uh, tempera mediums such as egg, tempera, or uh, casein? Casein. Casein. Casein is a milk-based paint, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. And uh, no, I never have. I've always wanted to, uh, especially, uh, uh, well, actually both of them, egg tempera and casein. I never have. I've always wanted to. Um, there we go. Uh, one of these days, you know, if you look at artists like Andrew Wyeth, who did watercolor, but he also did those, those mediums. I just, you know, it's really wonderful, beautiful stuff. And, uh, just getting in some of the reflection here on the water. Sandra on YouTube asks, what basic colors do I need to buy to be able to mix what I need? I would say get a warm and a cool of each of your primaries and uh, secondaries. So if you can, get a warm and a cool yellow, which would be like a lemon yellow and a cad yellow. And then... Uh, orange get a cad orange and maybe you, you can probably just get away with a cad orange alone and then cad red and alizarin crimson for a nice dark cool red and uh james asks who's your favorite oil painter i know i've got too many of them to mention andrew zorn uh joaquin soroya john singer Sargent. Uh, all of the above. Uh, Joe asks, can you glaze over gouache? You can, but you can't scrub it because it'll start coming up. And Matthew asks, uh, what was your first animal photo reference like? Any cool memories? And where are some great locations to study wildlife? Well, the, my favorite place to go for wildlife is Africa. The Maasai Mara in Kenya. And um, there's, there's really, yeah, I've got lots of great memories of being out in the, you know, in a little skiff in the, in the mouth of this river, you know, photographing grizzly bears as they catch salmon in Alaska. And, you know, just, you know, laying on top of a, a Land Rover in Africa, you know, photographing lions walking through the grass or whatever it might be i've got all kinds of fun memories do you have any plans to sell prints of your art would love to hang some uh, up on the wall i've got prints if you go to uh pixels.com and search word search my name i've got a whole bunch of stuff there there we go just getting some of the Some of that done there. Well, Aaron, just visit the whole world, okay? Every single place, the <laughs> jungle and the caves and the trees and all the side road towns. Just visit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll pretty much be traveling for the rest of our lives that like that. One of these days... In 
your travels, how much does the political climate of the country and surrounding countries affect your plans? Uh, not, I mean, a little bit. You know, there's there's been a couple countries that I've gone to that on paper were kind of sketchy, but when I got there, they were fine. You know, Myanmar and, and uh, you know, uh, you know, places like that. So... I I don't I pay somewhat of attention you know a, a fair amount of attention to certain places but by and large most places are not as bad as the media would have you think. So this one's a little clunky, a little funky, but I've been fun, it's been fun uh, creating it. About uh, traditional media, have you ever tried Copic or Prismacolor markers? Yes. Or do you only work with watercolors? No, I, I've, I've done uh, Copic and Prismacolor. So here I'm just laying down some nice orange over the top as a as kind of a wash. YouTube question. Aaron, ever tried the banjo? <laughs> We've got a banjo in the house. Ding 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 ding. ding. A Twitch question. Aaron, what are the top three projects that you are the most proud of? Brother Bear, Lion King, and Mulan. Really? Not even Beauty and the Beast in there? Oh, yeah. I guess Beauty and the Beast is in there. Forgot about Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was expecting uh, the, beat, the Beast be like number two or number three, to be honest. Uh, follow up on the starter color question. Do you have a favorite shade of blue in your set? Ultramarine. I used to collect a uh, um, a fig a uh, uh, you okay. I'm trying to think of a, you the get word. A, you get that okay? You all right. I used to collect tabletop figurines uh, for a game called Warhammer 40k. And it had an army called the Space Marines, and they were Ultramarines. Oh, yeah? That, that, that was the name of the army, was Ultramarines. So every time Not I hear... Same. Every time I hear Ultramarine Blue, I'm just like... <laughs> that's, my, that's the name of my army! I love drawing in the sand and uh, chalk on the roads. Do you ever do that, too? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. So here, I'm just laying in a little bit of color over the top. Just glazing, glazing, glazing. Trying not to scrub too much. I wanted to play that orange against some of the blue I've got on here. You can see how strong some of those oranges are. Just softening some of this up. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Then I'm going to go in and Hit some highlights. And then we're going to call it Feeny. Feeny. Hey, Feeny. Emily asks, How do you prefer to store your gouache paints? Uh, several tubes are difficult to travel with, but it also doesn't re-wet very well. What do you recommend? Oh, I just, I, I, I just soak them. I mean, I do everything in tubes like so and I just let it dry on my palette and I just re-wet it. For me it doesn't it doesn't bother me. And a Twitch question. You've been around so many wild animals. Have you ever been attacked by a wild animal? I wouldn't say attacked. I've been charged. I've been charged by an elephant. I've been charged by a, a lioness. We got too close to her litter of brand new cubs. Um, I've been bit by dogs. Uh, but nothing major. I'm, I'm always, I'm always very, very, uh, 
conscious of stressing an animal out. I don't want to stress them. And, uh, and so I've, I always err on caution. I have an idea for a stream. Aaron takes a screenshot of one of his favorite scenes he animated and he paints it in Photoshop. <laughs> That's interesting. So, so basically recreating a scene uh, in your own style in Photoshop. Like a realistic version or something. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I like the sound of that. <laughs> like I've been charged by an elephant and a lioness, but it's no big deal, guys. Really, <laughs> no big deal. It wasn't at the time. No, I got mauled by a lion that was being attacked by a bear, but I'm perfectly fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Just another normal day in the office. try animation but I'm confused by all the different products and programs where should I start uh, I don't know what to tell you there talk to your friends talk to people that have some advice as far as what what to use yeah because that, that that is a tough one it really depends on what it is that you're looking for Achilles, dude. Achilles, go going lay down. Down. I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> I'll see you later, okay? <laughs> so how do you want the phone? <laughs> hey, dog, how's it going? Okay. Say hi to your mother for me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just laying in a few last highlights here. So it says um, there's a there's a new face in the uh, in the paint palette in the gray one. It's a lady with the with curly hair, and I I can actually see that now. Where? The in the gray. So you got the. Oh yeah, I the see hair, it. The yeah. eye, the mouth. What software are you using right now? It looks so <laughs> realistic. It's a, it's a software called Gouache. You know, it's very ultra realistic. Uh, uh, comes with uh, VR goggles. <clears throat> Listening to you guys at work, my coworkers keep asking me, what? Why I'm laughing so much. Your impressions are killing me. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> you yeah, you want a couple of more laughs? Here's a couple of more. <laughs> me, Dustin's day. Okay. Hey. so happy. I'm going to the U.S. for the first time in my life. Super excited to visit uh, uh, Yosemite. But I'm slightly concerned about meeting bears too close. Have you ever had a close encounter? Yeah, that won't happen. Whoops. Hey, there's my phone. Turn it off! Turn it off! That was uh, a, a uh, uh, telemarketer. No, uh, that won't happen at Yosemite. You won't run into any bears too close at Yosemite. You'll run, you may see some black bears, but they, they, uh, there won't be an issue. 
Look like that bear is wearing people's clothes. <laughs> and I have run into bear. I had to, I have had some close encounters of bears in the in the wild, and uh, everything always turned out okay. So don't don't worry. Have you ever painted a pet on stream? No, I haven't. We painted animals on stream. We painted the um, um, possum, but not any of the pets like Achilles or any of them. No. They probably would not hold still long enough. No, we won't. One. And take a photo of one. Yeah. <laughs> but that's all you're going to get. Yep. Yeah. Uh, about the breakdowns in animation you were talking about earlier. Uh, how do you write them down on the charts for the next person who will work on the take? It, that depends on the timing that you're trying to get. So you have to you have to think about that timing and then write it out accordingly. So that's the only thing I can tell you on that. Do you think a traditional animation portfolio will be useful for applying to a studio? Considering most studios today do 3D animation. It depends on the studio. If your studio does traditional animation then yes of course it'd be handy if, it, if they don't then no it's not going to be handy and you don't want to use it if i'm if i'm a studio that does only 3d animation i don't want to see your 2d animation i know that sounds blunt but that's just that's how it is but if you have something that's interesting, you know, as a like a little tag at the end, then you know sometimes they, you know studios will like to see that. Donna looks over my shoulder to see what I'm watching. Wow, mom, can you put more hearts on this? Yes. She proceeds to hit the heart button several times. <laughs> So cute. Uh, what do you do, of course, on drawing animals in the zoo? Well, that's a cool idea. I'll do that. Hi. Uh, do you think you could show us more of your animations? Yes, we will do that on future streams. Right now, I'm going to just finish this up. Uh, for a noob wanting to try watercolor for the first time, uh, is there a particular paint brand you'd recommend using? Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton. Yep, that's my preferred brand is Windsor Newton. Is that what you're currently using? It's what I'm currently using now. Yep. Thoughts on the new Lion King movie? I have no thoughts, not until I see it, but I'm very excited to see it. I'm very excited to see what they've done with it. Um, I'm a big John Favreau fan, so I think he's going to do some really great stuff. Someone's training out of it. Like, oh, yes, I got mentioned. Yes, 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 yes. The person I was asking about the um, question of more animations. Like, oh my god, I got I got mentioned. <laughs> You're very welcome. How do you pronounce your name? Rosina? Rosina? R-O-S-Z-I-N-A. Rosanna! Rosanna! I think Rosanna is R O S A. Rose. Rosina? 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 Blech. I'm butchering it! Hey, I'm sorry! Yeah, I'm just throwing in a few. Really... <laughs> Alright, I'm really impatiently waiting for the first look at Scar for the new Lion King film. Oh, I've seen him. Oh, you have? Yeah. How's he look? He looks great. Does he look like the old Scar? No. No? Completely different. Yeah, it, much more realistic. These lions look real. Oh, Nick has a few big questions here. Um, 
Michael on YouTube asks, My former boss was killed by a 10-year-old grizzly uh, saw with a mostly grown cub last September in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh, he was hunting guide and got attacked while field dressing an elk. That's horrible. I'm sorry to hear that. That is horrible. And a Twitch question. Any advice you can give me? I have been drawing for a year. I am 31 and want to work in video games as a second animator. I have fear of breaking through and getting a job. I'm thinking of going to school for something, but worried about that I'm that if I am making the correct decision. Any thoughts? You just gotta. You've only been drawing a year, so you you've got a lot to learn. I've been drawing fifty years, and I'm still learning. So, um, just keep doing what you're doing, and you know if you're learning, if you're drawing, then you're, you're then you're learning, and then you know that's great. So just keep doing that, and uh, be patient. Who's voicing the new scar? Do you know? I don't. On your brushes, why do you leave the cellophane and price coating on the handles? Because I'm too busy. I don't, I'm not anal enough to take them off. Because <laughs> <laughs> they work just as well without taking them off. That, but you do realize that that's just like one extra gram of weight that's going to throw off your painting by, <laughs> yeah. by a mere centimeter. If that's going to throw off my painting, i got bigger problems. <laughs> There's my rhino. It's not the greatest, but it was fun. Painting flat light like this is often very hard. Still looks good though. I like painting shadow, light and shadow. It adds drama and it adds volume. Uh, but still, I've enjoyed doing this. What's your opinion on all the live-action remakes of classic Disney films? I love it, to be honest with you. As long as they're good, you know, why not? People get all bent out of shape about it, but I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, even... Like, I'm personally kind of, like, eh, about it. Like, I think it's the the younger me, like, being so used to these animated features. Like, seeing them so different in a live-action form just kind of throw, throws me off. Like, I'm not a huge fan of change. But... But the old version's still there. Yeah. I, I'm just worried about Aladdin with... Will Smith as the genie. Oh, it's going to be fine. Uh, hopefully. Why are you worried about that? There's I don't so know. many other things to worry about in the world. Oh, Smith I got I got plenty of other things to worry about, like <laughs> getting this getting this project done. Uh, yeah, there you go. But but the whole Will Smith thing is just like that one extra little one to add to the thousand pounds of worries. There we go. There's our rhino. Do you like our the rhino. movie Big Fish? I do like it. That was the movie with, uh, with uh, McGregor. Ewan McGregor. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's such a great movie. I always like the uh, the giant. Go away. <laughs> Yeah, just getting a little texture on his butt. Would you like to see Brother Bear turn into a live action remake? Actually, I think it would be pretty cool. I've thought about that. I don't, obviously, they'll never do it. The movie never was never big enough. But I think it would be pretty cool. Uh, you never know. If they... Uh, yes, I do. Uh, if, <laughs> if they keep this pace up of turning every single they're not, animated they're feature... They're not going to. 
I'm not gonna turn every single one of them in. There we go. I'm just surprised they haven't done uh, Snow White yet. Yeah. Hair dryer. Nick says Big Fish is probably my favorite Tim Burton film. I didn't realize it was Tim Burton. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Then, yeah, I would have to agree with that. There's our reference. There's our our guy. That's our guy. I'm going to pull the tape off. Pulling the tape off always makes it look a little better. I'm not crazy about this painting, but I really enjoyed making it. Every once in a while, you hit a stinker. And you just happen to do that stinker in front of a crowd of about a thousand people. But hey, that's all right. What I think you should do for uh, for the tape, you should center it back to the to center the camera so you can show it like a satisfying like a satisfaction video. Oh, yeah, hold on. We got one last piece. Just get it. Just get it right up there. Yeah. A nice clean line. Oh, right there. There you go. <laughs> Man, that is clean. Nice clean line. It's a line. I remember watching a um, unsatisfied clip where a guy did perfect calligraphy and like just super clean and it and he written it all out uh as it wrote out as satisfied yeah and as soon as he was done with it he smudged his hand right across it. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good it's like no <laughs> so there's my gouache attempt at painting a rhino today that was kind of fun and uh like i said it was um there's our our uh, reference and there's our painting. So that was, uh, it was great. And one of the great things I love about, like I said, with gouache, um, is the ability to just keep going back over it. You can go darker, you can go lighter. It's super forgiving. You can do all kinds of stuff with it and, uh, and, and just have fun with it. So like I said, this was not the greatest painting, but it's not the worst. And, uh, and I certainly enjoyed sharing the process with you guys. I'm just going to soften a couple of edges here. You know me. I can't stop when uh, when it's not done yet. Oh, this is an interesting question. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the live action adaptations, would you like to see the Robin Hood in live action? Not as humans, but the animal Robin Hood. Like the foxes and all that. Well, then that would be CG, wouldn't it? But it's a more realistic form. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. Like a CGI version, basically. That would be cool. Sure. Sure. So, I mean, technically, that's what they're doing with Lion King, I mean, even though they're calling it live action. Right. So, just filling it out here. I can't, I can't help it. Oh, yeah, they're doing a, I forgot, forgot Lindsay here, uh, uh, reminded me, Maleficent 2. Is coming up. They're doing a sequel to Maleficent. Yes. I think Don Hahn is producing that too. I wonder what that's going to be all about. I mean, I thought it was pretty much all sealed up tight in the end with that, uh, uh, with that bit. In the oh, end. there's always something, new story to be told somewhere along the way. <laughs> somewhere along the way. There's always a new tale to tell. So there we go. <laughs> so there's our rhino and uh that was a lot of fun like i said i kind of fix ah it's driving me crazy you can stop see, you can sell you can tell it can't you i gotta get going i gotta babysit Two hours later. Right there. That's what I was looking for right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. 
Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's right. Pocahontas is one I'd be surprised about if they didn't remake it. Yeah. I think it'd be too much pushback from a political uh, standpoint yeah. nowadays. Yeah, especially nowadays. Thank you so much for this stream, sir. Great as always. It was, I really enjoyed it. And uh, um, we're not going to be around uh, next week. We're take. I got to take time off again. Um, I'm ha uh, heading to Hawaii. Vedanta and I are off to Hawaii to hang out with friends. I'm going to be doing some artwork while I'm there, though. And I'll be sure to bring it back and share it with you guys. Uh, but, um... I hope you learned something with the gouache today. It was a lot of fun to do. It took a long time. How long were we into this? Um, I know it was over two hours. Uh, it's 3.30. Yeah, two and a half hours. So yeah. that took way too long for what we got accomplished. But it was still fun. Um, so go out. Try some gouache. Gouache, like I said, gouache is a lot more forgiving, I think, in a lot of ways. Because you can paint dark over light or light over dark or whatever and you can just have some fun with it it's really great for painting fur and and lots of great textures like that but um go out put some beauty back in the world be nice to somebody open the door for somebody put your grocery cart away all that good stuff and we will see you in a couple of weeks and i'm really looking forward to getting back again and with that i hope you guys have a great rest of the month and dustin take it away See you guys later. Clabra Beeper. Clabra Beeper.